Hi everyone and a very warm welcome back to the Commerce Moods Law YouTube channel. Today we're going to be discussing Royal Mail's reform proposals for its second class deliveries as well as its bulk business mailings. So let's get start with what's the issue. So Royal Mail have proposed that second class letters would be delivered only three times a week and bulk business mailings would take three days to reach recipients. Now, these ideas were part of the delivery company's submission to a review of its obligations being undertaken by Ofcom, the media regulator in the UK. Now, the company have said there is an urgent need for reform because of the sharp fall in their letter volumes over the past 20 years, which has made a lot of their basic services uneconomic. Now, Royal Mail was privatised between 2013 and 2015, but is still regulated by Ofcom and is currently obliged to make um, deliveries six days a week everywhere in the UK for the same flat price. Now, this is known as their universal service obligation, um, which means that they also must deliver parcels from Monday to Friday and provide both first class as a next day and second class post, which is within the next three days. Now, Ofcom doesn't have the power to stop Saturday letter deliveries or for to allow Royal Mail to make fewer delivery days because the law says they must be a six day a week service under the Postal Services Act 2011. And this is interesting because even though Royal Mail has been privatized, it is still regulated by Ofcom and it still has to fulfill this universal service obligation. Now, Martin Seidenberg, who's the CEO of Royal Mail's parent group, International Distribution Services. So as we said, Royal Mail has been privatized and so is owned by IDS said that the drop from 20 billion to 7 billion over the past 20 years in terms of the annual letters meant that the current USO, the Universal Service Obligation, was unsustainable. Now, Royal Mail posted a 419 million loss of um, in, in terms of pounds between 2022 and 2023 and a loss of 319 million for the first six months of this year. So from 2023 to 24 calendar year. And Royal Mail reported operating losses of 1 billion for the year to March 26th last year, also partly caused because of the strikes that took place between the workers. Now, operating losses, let's look at that definition. So an operating loss occurs when a company's operating expenses exceed their gross profits or their revenues if it's a service-oriented company. Now, an operating loss does not consider the effects of interest income, equity investments, or taxes. These items fall below the line, meaning that they're added or subtracted after either the operating loss or the profit um, in order to arrive at the net income. While Royal Mail is planning to cut second class deliveries under its reforms, the company have said that parcels, which obviously have become more popular in recent years and are more profitable, would still be delivered seven days a week. And I think that that is something that we can probably all owe to as much as we don't send as many letters anymore because everything is done either on social media or on email. Parcels have become increasingly common with the growth of online shopping. And so this is definitely something that they've decided to keep going for seven seven days a week in order to battle, you know, um, shops which deliver on their on their own and also places like Amazon and other marketplaces. So this also comes as the price of stamps increased on Tuesday last week, rising by up to 13% for a second class standard letter, which now costs 85p to send. Now, a cost of a first class standard letter also went up to went up 8%, up to £1.35. And so second class stamps being priced at 85p mean they're now the same cost as the first class one was at the start of 2022. So just in, you know, two years and a bit, we can see how much inflation has played a role in terms of the increase in the price for these first class and second class stamps. Now, the continued first class obligation recognized, um, as Roma have said, the importance of next day and Saturday deliveries, especially for the NHS, publishers and senders of greeting cards. Now, so the proposals also include extending the delivery speed for bulk business mail to arrive within three days instead of two. And this, they have said, would save them up to £300 million a year. 
So Roma have also added that there would be fewer than a thousand voluntary redundancies. Now, what is a voluntary redundancy, you may ask? So a voluntary redundancy is the process of an employee choosing to take redundancy themselves as opposed to it being a compulsory one. And so this is meant to terminate employment in exchange for some kind of redundancy payout. Now, while employees can negotiate the terms of their voluntary redundancy, they can't actually refuse it. And so when they said there'd be fewer than thousand voluntary ones, we have to kind of, you know, think about, for example, during COVID, um, the number of redundancies and even following that, they really did go up. And so whilst you may get a generous payout, there's still a chance that many people um, or up to a thousand or more than that, perhaps in the next few years, are likely to lose their jobs or be made redundant from it. The group did insist that it would not expect to make any compulsory redundancies and hopes that the roles can be reduced through natural staff turnover um, among its current 130,000 workforce. So the group have said that it costs the firm between £1 million to £2 million every day to provide this USO in the UK. And since it expects letter volumes to fall to around £4 billion in the next five years, clearly you can see why they feel like this um, USO is clearly unsustainable. And Romo have also added that they would like to add new reliability targets as well as revised realistic speed goals and add some tracking to its universal service parcels i think this is something that probably a lot of us can benefit from and if you think about it as a consumer you can benefit from it if you're ordering something from a a small business but also as a small business that means that you can give your customers more assurance on when packages will be arriving and know that you know there are not going to be customer complaints if those packages aren't delivered on time particularly if you know that extra kind of last mile of getting that from you to them was not really something in your hands and was rather in the control of a delivery company like Royal Mail. So they've been consulting on these reforms since January with a deadline set actually for the 3rd of April, so sometime last week. And the regulator aims to report back with an update in the summer. But Romo has called on Ofcom to put the chains in place by April next year. So that's April 2025. Now, Ofcom have expressed a desire for a national debate on the future of the postal service and have been hosting events in uh, across the UK, like roundtable discussions and various groups. So clearly they want to understand what the impact of these reforms will be and um, ensure that, you know, it's balanced with the interests of business consumers and, of course, Royal itself. And Ofcom have also estimated the cost of delivering this USO is between £325 million and £675 million a year. And so it's forecasted that reducing the number of delivery days could cut costs by up to £650 million. And so you can see how, you know, they they are really considering these um, proposals being put forward by Royal Mail. Now, the Greeting Card Association, in its own submission to the Ofcom consultation, has said that stopping delivery of standard letters on Tuesdays or Wednesdays would be far less damaging than a previously mooted plan to um, drop Saturday deliveries. And so, you know, there really isn't a a perfect solution to this, but you can see that small businesses, particularly ones with, with greeting cards and things that perhaps families do still send to each other, you can see that, you know, it'd be a lot helpful for them for it to be something that's in the middle of the week, as opposed to on a weekend when packages and you kind of want them generally to be arrived. In response to Royal Mail's submission to the regulator on Wednesday, a spokesperson for the Department for Business have said that any changes to its operations would need to take into account the impact on business and vulnerable consumers who rely on this vital service. They said they had they will wait for Ofcom's recommendations, but the government has strongly opposed the reduction of a six-day service. Now you can see from the government perspective how they definitely would need to balance the interests of the um, consumer and businesses and you know in a public facing role they are not a private company like Royal Mail and so they want to ensure that this obligation is being carried out particularly because it is part of the Postal Services Act. So under the regulator's current rules Royal Mail is required to deliver 93% of first class post within one working day and 98.5% of second class within three working days. 
So you can see the threshold is quite high there. But in between 2022 to 2023, the company only delivered 73.7% of first class and 90.7% of um, second class on time. The company's poor performance around deliveries did lead to it being fined £5.6 million for missing delivery targets in late 2023. And on Wednesday, you know, just to add fuel to the fire, so Wednesday last week, the company was also forced to respond to complaints by consumers who've been hit with £5 charges to collect post because the stamps that were used were flagged as counterfeit. Now, let's look at what this means. So um, something that is counterfeit or counterfeit, something that is made in exact imitation of um, another that's valuable with the intention to deceive or defraud. So essentially, when you're replicating a product or a service, but with the intention of defrauding something with or defrauding someone with it, so doing it in a fraudulent manner. Now, the issue has emerged since the service switched to a new barcoded system last July. And so a spokesperson for Romo has said that the customer should only buy stamps from post offices or other high street le- retailers. So on Tuesday night last week, Kevin Hollenrake, who's the post office minister, um, has said that he'd held a meeting with Seidenberg, so the CEO who we spoke about earlier, to try and find the source of the problem. And Rommel have said that, you know, they do take this problem seriously and that overall the barcode stamps have significantly reduced stamp fraud since their introduction so again i think it brings back you know we've spoken a bit about technology um, on the channel and and its impacts but whilst it can bring a lot of efficiency and it can improve um the level of productivity it also does have its own set of problems and they do need to be monitored on a regular basis so countries like sweden in 2018 Belgium twice since 2020 and Norway and Denmark um, twice since 2016 have all made changes. And overall, these all lead to um, letters being delivered less often or taking longer to deliver letters. So Ofcom have promised to keep the price of sending second class letters pegged the rate of inflation until March 2027. Obviously, that would have been quite high a couple of years ago. But since um, inflation has come down, hopefully it stays pegged to that rate. And this means that the price won't go up more than the rate of inflation. Now, the Lib Dems have voiced their concerns that the changes proposed by Royal Mail risk creating a cost of postage crisis. So we've had a cost of living crisis and arguably are currently still going through one. And so they have said that people will feel forced to pay for first class stamps because second class delivery days are being slashed. Now, there was a letter from Royal Mail to its consumers last week, which outlined some of the proposals we've discussed. And this is how they ended the letter, which I thought was quite interesting. So they've said, if we want to save the universal service, we must change the universal service. We're doing everything we can to transform so that we can serve you better. And now we need Ofcom, the regulator, to do their bit and implement the change. So I want you to tell me in the comment section down below, what do you think of these proposals? Do you think they will work? Do you think that it's the way that Royal Mail should go? And if not, what do you think should be the alternative? And with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something from it. If you did enjoy this video and have um, been watching on the channel, please do consider liking this video and subscribing. I'd be super grateful for that. And I'll be back very soon with another video. Until then, take care and goodbye. Thank you.